born uh, in East Los Angeles, the Boyle Heights area. There's uh, 11 of us in our family, uh, second to the youngest. I was born to a pretty big family, seven siblings, my mom and dad. Very Catholic. When the freeways kind of tore up those neighborhoods, these people started to leave, so my dad had an opportunity to buy a house for cheap. And that's how we kind of moved into Boyle Heights. I had a lot of freedom as a child. Uh, my parents were pretty much burnt out raising everyone before me, so I pretty much got to do whatever I wanted. I've always felt that music was in me and that I needed to pursue music. I had a brother that's just slightly older than me, and he was, um, he was into the glitter rock, uh, like the David Bowie punk rock. Uh, so, like, together we formed a, a, one of our first punk rock bands. I was a singer since I was really young. I mean, I was in school choir. I was like a high soprano. Even when I was really young, I always felt like I was an uh, uh, outsider. I didn't really feel like I fit in. And I think that whole punk thing, when it sort of came around, it kind of catered to the, the outsider in a way. It was like, it was sort of like a movement for people that didn't fit in into the mainstream. And I felt like that was just like my whole life was not being able to fit in. I just love the simple approach about it. I don't have to be this super slick guitarist. You know, I could just write my own songs with the little knowledge that I have. And you didn't, you know, it wasn't like uh, you go to the mall and you pick up your uh, punk rock outfit like it is now, you know. And so that was very appealing. I'd always had a desire to, to be in a band somehow. But like I said, it wasn't really good at going out and meeting people and networking that way. Um, I had one friend, Sean Carrillo, and one night we went out to the Starwood together. We were going to go see the jam. There was a few people uh, from East Los Angeles, and, I w and one of them was Teresa Covarrubias. Well, I saw Rudy, Rudy Medina, and I used to go to school with his sister. She came up to me and she goes, hey, I know you. You know, we just met and we started talking, and she really blew my mind because she was so different from anyone I had ever met. She used to write lyrics, which I thought was interesting. I never really met someone that was so creative like her. And, uh, you know, I told her about my band falling apart. And she said, oh yeah, I, I play in a band too. I said, you do? <laughs> Can you sing? <laughs> I got a lot of influence just from the neighborhood, just watching different characters in the neighborhood. Everything I was writing about were experiences that were happening to me. Sitting at Yum Yum, you know, all night and just sitting there and watching people come in and out, watching the cops come in and out, just things that would happen. And just on that one little corner, you know, if you sit at Yum Yum long enough for enough evenings, you, you see the same people kind of coming in. You can start creating like ideas about what, what's going on with them or what they're experiencing. I'm going to introduce each member Therese. Rudy. <laughs> this is Robert. Lou. Did. Los Illegals, they used to practice down the block right there at uh, Self Up Graphics. And so I knew of them, but I didn't know them personally. One time we were practicing, and uh, Jesse Bellows and uh, Willie Arron, they came down and they were like, oh, business, and you know, oh, well, you know, we want to book you guys. And like, who's these guys? And so they invited us to do the first uh, Vex show. The headliners was the Plugs, Los Illegals, and the Brad. I think the Undertakers were also there. But that was like uh, one of our biggest, most important shows that we ever did. You know, they were like all into the arts and painting and murals. And it got us more into thinking more creatively, uh, more artistically. But it really formed like a bond with all that creative community. All these different creative uh, things coming together. Because it wasn't just the music, it was also like there were poets there and there were artists there and it was like this one big community and it just felt like this pivotal point. Things started picking up really quick. Probably after like that Vex show, I think, got the band a little more interest and... We started getting radio play. We, we never even dreamed of that. Uh, East Los Angeles as a whole got a dangerous reputation, you know, like, don't go there, it's dangerous. And so that whole Hollywood scene was very reluctant. Really, the way we really got to meet uh, X was, um, uh, I don't know who invited them to this one backyard party we did in City Terrace. And we were used to the, you know, people getting out of control and whatever. So we're doing the show and this one guy is getting all crazy and getting into the music and, and then he's like, pulls out a gun and he starts blowing it like, Woo! Like getting all into that. And then Jando and Xene just turn white and like, and we we're just like, Someone get this dude out of here. I remember John Doe called me up and he was like, hey, you know, we want you guys to open for us at the whiskey. And the, to me, the whiskey was like, 
Oh my god, here we are, these amateurs doing backyard parties, and all of a sudden we get invited to open for X at the Whiskey. And so that was a really important show in the sense that um, like it introduced us to the whole Hollywood uh, scene. And once we started playing in Hollywood, we kind of got an in. So that's kind of how we got our in. I don't think when we first started out that that was the intent, that we're going to be an East LA band. I think that's just what we were. I think like any other artist, we just wanted to create music. We just wanted to perform and we just needed to get that creative part of ourselves out. I think it was more people outside of the, the group that started to label. They had these really strange expectations about what they expected to hear. If you came from East LA, then you were expected to like, represent. You know, what about these other bands like from Hollywood? I mean, did they have to represent their cultures too? No. You know, it was always like this, like a double standard. Things started turning bad for the band as soon as we hooked up with management. It just started to, it started to erode. And the creativity, the genuineness of the band just started to erode. I would say it was mostly just being uh, manipulated by, by management. They wanted to take us and, you know, remove us from this natural progression that we were doing. And they wanted to record this mega, you know, a My Sharona version. I don't know what they wanted. So they were trying to cater to these A&R people. And so what they ended up doing was like manipulating the music and trying to do things to the music to make it more sellable to the ear of these people. So they had like this big plan that they were going to play this tape to the A&R people. So what the management did is they got like a fleet of lowriders, drove them over to Capitol, put them into the lowriders, and then drove them around Hollywood listening to the, the, the demo, you know? And, and that for me was just like, you know what, this is, this is shit. Really just wanting to like kind of expand maybe the idea of what a Chicano is beyond this, you know, and here's these guys playing up that image again, you know. We bought our, all our tapes back and our rights back, but by that point, man, we, we, had lost, we had lost momentum, inspiration, we were infighting, uh, it got ugly, too much drinking, we lost focus. And so the band broke up and we never released the record. wonder if it made a difference or if, if people remember it. And in a way it was kind of nice to see that that music was still out there somewhere, someone was still listening to it and it still meant something to somebody. That is like so gratifying to know that you touch people like that because that's the whole point I think. And I had never gotten that from anybody like somebody coming up to me when I was 20 and really saying hey you know what your song it really you know and like hearing it now sort of makes all the garbage that we had to go through, it makes it worthwhile.